Hey guys, welcome back to this, the second episode of Home Automation at Home, where I show you guys how to build your own home automation systems at a fraction of the cost of the professional units out there. In the last episode, I showed you guys how to set up a Raspberry Pi and an ESP8266 to utilize MQTT to control your devices. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to take two ESP8266s and use them to control the lights in your house. One of the modules will have a button or a switch on it to toggle the lights on or off. And the other module will have a relay connected to it to actually control the lights in the house. Now, this is going to be building off of last episode because the two ESP modules will be using the MQTT protocol to communicate with each other. Now, this project isn't limited to just a single lamp. You can actually have as many lamp modules as you want be controlled by our single switch module. So this is going to be a really interesting and useful tutorial for automating the lights in your house. We will also be taking a look at a Python script that will allow us to log when we turn our lights on and off and how long they've actually been on for. So let's take a look at the hardware for this project. So as you can see we still have the Raspberry Pi that we used last time and we haven't modified anything at all. It's still just running the MQTT server. And now we have not one, but two ESP8266 modules. Now, I have these both on a single breadboard, but I want you to note that they are not actually connected to each other through any sort of data link, except through the Raspberry Pi's MQTT broker. So, on the right here, I have a single ESP module with a button on it. And on the left, I have another ESP module and this is using an optocouple to control a relay module which is connected to my lamp. In a previous video I showed you guys how to wire up one of these relay modules using an opto isolator to control anything in your house. So make sure to check that video out as well. On the breadboard here we also have the quick and dirty ESP8266 power module that I also have a video showing how to build. So if you're interested in that, check that video out as well. It's a really interesting and quick build and it will be great for powering all of these home automation projects that I show you in this series. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the code that makes all of this run. Alright guys, so here we are with the Arduino software and because we have two separate ESP modules doing two separate functions, we actually have separate programs, one for each module. So here is the light node. Now this is the code that we actually use on the module connected to the relay to our light. This is more or less the exact same code from the last video. So if you're wondering how this works, please go and check out part one of this series. It goes through basically all of this code and how it works and what it's doing. There are a couple of changes that I've made so I've renamed my light topic string to slash house slash light one, which is a change from slash test slash light one. And I've actually added a separate string here for my confirm topic, which is house slash light one confirm. So that's more or less all that I've added to the light node here. It's basically the exact same program. Again, go check out part one of this series to learn how this works. And now we'll take a look at the button code. All right, so here we are with the code that will be on the controlling ESP module. That is the one that has the button or toggle switch on it. So in terms of setup, this code is very similar to the code that runs the light module. We include our pub sub client and our ESP8266 Wi-Fi library. We're adding the bounce to library, and this will allow us to detect pushes on our button that we have wired up. And then again, the parts that you need to fill out here are your MQTT server IP address. So that's generally going to be the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, your Wi-Fi's SSID name, and your Wi-Fi's password. So here we define the pin that the button will be connected to. So this is on the GPIO pin of the ESP module. And then we have our light topic again, but instead of subscribing to this light topic, we'll actually be publishing to this topic 
and the light module will receive that message and interpret it to turn the lights on or off. So we'll be using the bounce library to detect presses on our button on the controlling module. So here we actually create an instance of the bounce class that we'll get to setting up in just a moment. Again, we create our Wi-Fi client and we create our pub sub client and this is our MQTT client and we call it client and this is what we'll be using to actually publish messages to our MQTT server. So in setup, it's very similar to code that we've seen in the past. I set my button pin as an input and I attach it to my bounce object and give it an interval of five milliseconds. So that's the debounce time. I start up the serial line for debugging and I initialize the Wi-Fi subsystem and attempt a connection to the Wi-Fi network. Now, if you're curious how this code works, check out part one of this series and we go through how all of the setup works for connecting to a Wi-Fi network on the ESP module. Inside of loop, again, it's very simple, just like we've been keeping it. We make sure that we're connected to the network, and if not, we attempt a reconnection. We run our MQTT loop, and we have this one function here that I've created called check button, and that's the majority of the code, and that, that code is right here. That's this function here. We have a Boolean here, which keeps track of whether or not the last time we toggled, we were on or off. And then we have an if statement here that checks to see whether the button has been pushed. And if it has been, we check to see if we were off. And if we were, we tell the light topic one, indicating that we want to turn on. And we set our is on variable to true. Otherwise, else, we tell our light node that we want to turn off and we set our current state to off. So other than that, there's not a whole lot going on. Again, very simple loop. All we do is we check to reconnect, we run our MQTT loop, and we check our button. And we give a small delay just so that the ESP module has time to run the Wi-Fi backend. So between these two pieces of software that I've just shown you, this is all you actually need to get up and running with this tutorial today. Now, I'm also going to show you a Python script that will allow you to keep track of when the lights were turned on and off and how long they were on for. So, this should be useful for any of you guys who actually want to keep track of the lights in your house and how long they've been on and off for. It's a really useful little script, in my opinion. All right, so here's our Python script. So again, this is not strictly necessary to have your light turning on and off. It's not needed, but it is a useful little script to keep track of things. Up at the top here, we import a bunch of packages. The one that you probably don't have at this point, or at least is not a standard package, is the PAHO MQTT client. And I'll put a link to this package in the description of the video so you can find it and install it yourself. So we have a variable here that keeps track of when we actually turned the light on last. And then here, this is all, it looks complicated. It's not that complicated. It's really just creating a log file and setting up the format for the logger. So if you want to understand in detail how this works, just look up the logging package and it'll tell you exactly what all of this is. So I'm going to skip over this chunk of code here just for a moment and we're going to look at our MQTT setup here. So right off the bat we create a an instance of our MQTT client and we call it MQTT and then we need to tell it what to do when we receive a message that we're subscribed to. So I have this function called onMessage, which I've skipped over for a moment. This function will be called every time we receive a message to anything that we're subscribed to. So it's not unique to the subscribe topic. It is just a, a generalized function. It, it's the same as our callback function on, in our Arduino code. So I'm assuming that you will be connecting to your MQTT broker from your Raspberry Pi, from the device that is running the broker. 
So I'm assuming that you're connecting to it from localhost and it's the port for the MQTT broker is 1883. And then we subscribe to our light topic. So we're actually subscribing to the light confirm topic because I could press the button and if the light module isn't plugged in, then the light won't turn on. So I don't want to log the light being turned on if the light's not even plugged in. So I have it actually linked to the light one confirm, which is our little ping back. And that will only make it so that we log information that's actually happened, that the, act the light has actually turned on or off. Not just that we wanted it to turn on or off, but that the light wasn't plugged in, so it didn't turn on or off. And then we start the MQTT loop in a separate thread. And yes, I know this is maybe not the best way to have my script stay open, but because the MQTT client is running in a separate thread, I need some way to keep the script running, so I have it just in an infinite while loop. So up here we have our onMessage function. So this is what will be called every time we receive any message that we're subscribed to. In this tutorial, we're only subscribed to one topic, but this will get called for all the topics if we were subscribed to more than one. So the first thing that we do is we define our, our global variables here. So these are things that will be changing as we run this, this function. So on start time, like I said, that's our, our flag for when we turned the light on last. And then we have our logger, and this will just allow us to actually output to a log file from this function. And yes, I know that function is the wrong term for Python, but I'm a C programmer, so deal with it. I, set, I call them functions. So we have our local time, and I just make this up at the top. This is just a neatly formatted string of the current date and time, and this will be appended to our log file every time we log something. This next line here just prints out the topic and the payload that we just received, just so that we can see in the console what's happening as, it's, as messages are coming in. And then we check here to see whether or not our message topic was our light one confirm. We're only subscribed to one topic here, but I figured that I would have this just to make things more clear that this should only happen when our light one confirm topic is sending the message. So here we check if our payload was equal to on, and what we do is we take note of the current time, and then we log it, and we just say light was turned on at and print out the time, and we put it into our log file as well. Otherwise, if the payload was not on, I'm assuming that the payload was off, and I could be more explicit and say elif message.payload equals off, but this should work well enough, and it does. So now we have to actually take note of how long the light was on. So to do that, we take the difference of now versus when we turned it on, which will return back to us the number of seconds that the light was turned on. And then we print and log the time that the light was turned off at, and then we print and log the total number of seconds that the light was on for. And that's basically all there is to the script. It's a very simple little script. It doesn't do a whole lot, but it does get you up and running with MQTT on Python, so you can use Python scripts to control your home automation as well using this method. And it's just, it's a really useful thing to have around to be able to log when things are happening. So I hope you find this useful as well. Again, you don't need it, but it is a nice script to use. Now that we have all of the code and we've seen how all of it works, let's get it uploaded onto our ESP modules and actually test it out. All right, so now that we've seen both how this is wired up and the code behind it, let's see it running in action. So I have over here on the table, I have my ESP modules. Now remember, they're not actually connected together physically. They will be talking via MQTT. And I also have the terminal window up, so you can actually see the Python script logging and running as we turn the light on and off. All right, now that the script is running, let's try turning the light on. So 
I have my ESP module over here with the button attached. I'm going to click the button and look at that. The light turned on and our terminal window registered that I turned the light on and printed out the time that I turned it on. And now if I click the button again, the light turned off and not only did our, our terminal window here register the time that we turned it off, but it also told us that the light was on for a total of 11 seconds. Now, this is logged here on the terminal window, but it's also being logged to a, a file that's being generated each time the Python script is run. So you can actually save these log files and parse them out and understand just how long your lights have been on and off for throughout the day. So that's all there is for the tutorial today. I hope you guys have been enjoying watching this series as much as I've been enjoying making it. If you do like this series and you'd like to see more videos like it, definitely subscribe to my channel and make sure to like this video. If you have any special requests for videos that you'd like to see me make, please definitely let me know in the comments or shoot me a message on Twitter. I'd love to hear what you guys want me to make as well. All right, well, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. I'll see you later.